Every single person out there better go home and thank their mama tonight for what women go through to bring children into this world because my God. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha Gay Geek XX Chic and we are back with a brand new show. Yes, yes. Game of Thrones has come out with another leg in the franchise, one can say, after the wildly successful initial franchise of Game of Thrones. We now have a prequel spinoff, which was actually teased out about two years ago, and it is called House of the Dragon. It is basically supposed to be all about the, shall we say, notorious line of the dragon-wielding Targaryens. So we heard a lot about the legend of the Targaryens throughout the show. I myself personally have read the book, so I am a little more aware of some of the other lore that the show didn't have time to get into, but it is quite a sordid and slightly twisted history, but it sounds like it's quite grandiose. And actually the book itself doesn't get too deeply into Targaryen background, but I think it'll be fun to kind of see where all of this started. You know, we, he we heard it referenced a little bit in the show, but really just in the sense of how Daenerys came to be a part of the story. And of course, unfortunately, the tragic story of Jon Snow's parents. But I think overall, I think the, the big thing that people want to understand about the Targaryens is how they came to power. How did they come in possession of these dragons? What was the family dynamic like? Because a lot of that storytelling that we heard in the Game of Thrones show was via people who were outside of the family. And the Targaryens did not have a good reputation, right? Because they were clearly overthrown, their regime was broken. And so a lot of the people who would be telling the story of the Targaryens would have been biased or tainted by their either hatred of the family or perceptions of the family. And as I said, I think it's just a lot of it was very negatively biased in order to support their claims to their own thrones and kingdoms, right? So it'll be interesting to see if this series really looks at a uh, objective viewpoint of what the Targaryens were like. Yeah, I'm very interested to see kind of where they go with this story, how much of it's going to lead into what we saw in Game of Thrones, if at all. Some of them may have been referred to in the Game of Thrones series, but I feel like we're going to get some brand new characters, ones that were probably not going to exist beyond this series. My point is, there's a lot of lore that we could possibly dip into with this show, and I'm not sure what they're going to go through, but I'm hoping we get a nice little taste of all the different spices that the world of Game of Thrones has to offer through this series and potentially opening doors for even more spinoffs because I really liked the original show even though I was a little bit disappointed with the way that they ended it but that's neither here nor there. But anyhow I've done enough talking let's jump into this reaction but before I do if this is your first time in my channel welcome to my channel I do reactions to shows like these so if you're interested in watching me do that please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as a notification bell so you can be notified when I do more reactions to this show and if you really like what you're seeing I'd appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up button as well leave some comments below it just helps a girl get a little bit of algorithm love which I'm always looking out for and very very grateful for and the same goes for those of you who've been here before. Welcome back. Thank you so much for coming back for this show as well. And if you haven't joined the fam, love to have you. We're on a march to 10K and we're getting closer every day. Would love to have you there. All right, guys, without further ado, let's get into episode one, which is called Heirs of the Dragon, right about now. With 10 adult dragons under its yoke. 10? No power in the world could stand against it. Makes sense. Daenerys reigned over nearly 60 years of peace and prosperity. Oh, this is the set where Daenerys died. Princess Rhaenys Targaryen, the king's eldest descendant, and her younger cousin, Prince Viserys Targaryen, uh -huh. the king's eldest male descendant. Viserys, that's who Daenerys' brother was named after, if he's anything like his namesake. The Prince Viserys Targaryen, the Prince of Dragon's Oh. A woman would not inherit the Iron Throne. I'm sorry, my dear. Misogyny is just in every universe, huh? The only thing that could tear down the House of the Dragon was itself. I was about to say, <laughs> infighting. And it looks like we already have infighting ready to happen because what's her name, Rhaenyra? She didn't look not, she didn't look happy at all. She had that stiff upper lip, you know, like, congratulations, so happy for you. She got herself a black husband too, I noticed that. Finally, some diversity. Okay. Gotcha. Oh, I like how they did that. 172 years before Daenerys. So quite a while. Oh, who's flying in the sky? Oh, I hope we get lots of dragon stuff in this series because we only got a little bit towards the end of Game of Thrones. Whee! 
This looks great, by the way, visually already. That actor, I know him, he's Scottish. He was just in a series I watched. Um, she looks Welcome very Daenerys look like. Every time that golden beast brings you back unspoiled, saves my head from a spike. Oh, she's in the, for the Witcher. He was in the Witcher. Why does he look like he's already been burned by this dragon? <laughs> Folks just be covered in soot regularly. That is one hot chandelier. How do you even light that? You will lie in this bed soon enough for an era. Ew. We have royal wounds, you and I. The child bed is our battlefield. Yuck. Don't like it. Now take a bath, you stink of dragon. If the stench of dragon keeps any men from getting near my royal womb, I think I'll stay unwashed. No, your grace. Rhaenyra, you're late. King's Cup Banner must not be late. Leaves people wanting to come. He's visiting mother. That's all right. He was just talking. I would urge that you not allow this triarchy much latitude in the Stepstones, Your Grace. If those shipping lanes should fall, it will beggar our ports. The Crown has heard your report, Lord Corliss, and takes it under advisement. Mm. All right. I see what's happening here. When your whole monarchy falls, I hope he gets to scream I told you so from his dragon. Assuming that he has a dragon. Before the games are over, my son will be born. The whole realm will celebrate. How do you know it's we a boy? We have no way of predicting the sex of the child. Thank you! There's a boy in the queen's belly. Okay. And if there isn't? I know it. And if there isn't? That horrible throne. Ow. She's sharp. I like her. What is it? Do you know what it is? No. It's Valerian steel. We've heard that before. Turn around. He's a bit creepy. And considering the way this family works, I'm not sure I like it. You want him to have a son? I want to fly with you and drag him back. See the great wonders across the narrow scene and eat only cake. <laughs> I'm being serious. I'm never just about cake. I mean, I feel like she's dead ass. What position can she have in a, in a misogynist monarchy? It's an interesting conundrum, right? This is the problem that women have had in these types of environments for so long. Like, of course she wants her father to have a son because if he doesn't have a boy, they're gonna lose their entire position. And as a daughter, that means she's gonna be sold off. We've sent inquiries to the Citadel. They are searching the text for similar cases. It's a small cut from sitting the throne. It's nothing. That is infected. Cauterization would be a wise course of treatment, Your Grace. I think so. It will be painful. Fine. Yes, do something. You don't want just festering. Ugh. Wounds that won't heal. What would that even be? The tourney. To celebrate the first one son that we presently do not have. Right? A little premature. But nothing will cause the babe to grow a cock if it does not already possess. Ah! This child is a boy. Yeah. Okay. I've never been more certain of anything. Okay. There are people in today's world who've had ultrasounds saying they're going to have a girl and had a surprise. Or vice versa. This is the last time, Viserys. Yep. I know it is my duty to provide you an heir. And I'm sorry if I have failed you in that I am. <sighs> Ugh, don't get me started on how gross that assumption is. But good for her for standing up for herself. They don't talk a lot about the toll that having children that unfortunately don't make it to term or are stillborn, it's extremely emotionally draining and on the woman too, the whole takes in her body. I'm glad she's standing her ground and I hope it's respected if this is a girl. Beginning tonight, King's Landing will learn to fear the color gold. Okay, go off dude bros. Very interesting that this is what we're getting of King's Landing when it was the center of everything in the series. Why are you just beating random people? Are these even the criminals? I guess we should be thankful they're not hitting the women and kids yet.
I mean, they wouldn't be the only place that's taking care of thieves in that way, but the other one was a bit much. Wow. It was an unprecedented roundup of criminals of every ilk. Are you sure they were all criminals? You might not know this unless you left the safety of the Red Keep, but much of King's Landing is seen by the small folk as lawless and terrifying. Really? Our city should be safe for all its people. Is safety could... accomplished through sheer terror? The same devotion to his lady wife as he does his work, Your Grace. But you've not been Ooh. seen in the Bay of Royal Broomstone for quite some time. I think my bronze bitch is happier for my absence. Lady Rhea is your wife. Oh my god. The veil men are said to fuck sheep instead of women. I can assure you, the sheep are prettier. Yeah. Can we kill him? Where is Lady Rhea? I feel bad for her already. You know how my brother makes sport of provoking you. Must you indulge him? Must you not check your brother for being an asshat? Any further performances like last night's will be answered. That's it? Oh my God, that's like the equivalent of counting to three and doing nothing. It's okay, you know, to get rid of your siblings. Daenerys did it. This new city watch might be a good thing. Right. We'll see about that. Now we're starting to see the things that are leading up to why they wanted to overthrow these guys. But it's interesting to see that not all of them necessarily agreed with that brutality. Okay, we'll just jump right into the old Game of Thrones. <laughs> all right, just hang out on my back then. Oh, can't get it up. It's what you deserve. What troubles you, my prince? Besides being a complete jackass. That's the expression. Might as well be a dick if you don't have one. Right of Caraxes, wild of dark sister. Oh my god. The king cannot replace you. Look at her fluffing him without actually fluffing him. I really hope his real wife is just figuring out a way to slowly poison him to death. Queen Emma has begun her labors. Praying for Queen Emma. <gasps> Jousting! Actually, no, it's bad. It, the horses get hurt a lot in these. Splinters to the eye and, and the like. I would humbly ask for the favor of the queen who never was. Ooh, I like that title. The queen that never was. Damn, isn't that all of us? <laughs> Lord Stokeworth's daughter is promised to that young Tarly Squire. Lord Massey, sir. Tarly? Starting to see some stags? So this is one of Robert Baratheon's ancestors. Also a fail, not a shock. Actually, I shouldn't say that. Baratheons were actually pretty good in battle from my recollection. Just maybe not this guy. That is a beautiful set. Your helmet is stupid, just like you. Eeny, meeny, miny, your mom's a hoe. At the Wayne High Tower of Old Town, eldest son of the Hand of the King. Okay. I don't think I've ever seen that sigil before the High Tower. It must have been gone before Game of Thrones time. Ah, that's why he's doing this. I get it now. He is definitely going to cheat, though. I can feel it. He's going to do something horrible. Blind him. Did I not say he was going to cheat? Because he's a bitch. Oh, what are you going to say to this now, King? And I can win these games, Lady Allison. Having your favor would all but assure it. Sansa Stark all over again. Uh oh. What's going on with the birth? That looked like a maester, no? The infant is in breach, Your Grace. All attempts to turn the vapor failed. I guess this is before cesarean sections. Emma, I'm here. I'm here. Childbirth is evil, y'all. I'm glad that he actually went to her, though. That shows that he actually loves her, which is a nice change. Breach births can be incredibly hard on the mother. Kills a lot of moms, actually. Oh my god. Wow, wow. Is it that serious? I wonder if this is how we should celebrate the birth of our future king. You know what I mean? Let's just have murder and mayhem to celebrate new life. Wow. Yeah, exactly. We didn't need to see it, but I agree. Oh my God. 
I mean, I guess both events are bloody, but at least one, you know, the, the blood shed is for a good cause. For the father to make an impossible choice. I'll speak it. Baby or to mama? sacrifice one or to lose them both. Horrible choice. A technique is taught at the Citadel, which involves cutting directly into the wound to free the infant. I mean, in a situation like this, I hate this, but either both are going to die or you're going to lose one. I just need one person to hit him in the face. You, yeah, unnamed knight from a house no one knows about. Please hit him in the face. Make his outside as ugly as his inside. Are you going to tell her? Most mothers would choose that anyways, but... I love you. I believe you, actually. <laughs> Should you tell... No, no, oh my god, can you at least no, knock her out? Please knock her out! No, I'm scared. Yes, she should... No. It's all right. Please. Knock her out! No. Oh my god. This is horrific. Every single person out there better go home and thank their mama tonight for what women go through to bring children into this world because my God. My God. Yay! Drag his ass! Drag it! Bitch. That's what you get for what you did to that horse and that poor guy. Oh, a mace. That's hot. Oh, there goes your shield, bitch. Oh, God, this is so vile. Y'all, the violation women go through for the sake of life, I'm telling you. Every person out there needs to say thank you to their mama today, <laughs> okay? If you haven't already, just say thank you, mama. Thank you for risking your life. I'm so sorry. You seem like you're a really sweet lady. And if it's a girl, he's gonna resent the hell out of that girl. Is it a boy? Please let it be a boy just because I hate that guy. Sorry. This guy likes to do bitch moves, so I'm not mad at it. It's that or die. He's got the right to kill you. Aww. All right, P-Man, you were a G. Y'all couldn't even knock her out. That was cold, though. Y'all could have knocked her out. She didn't need to be conscious for that. He's Dornish. I was hoping to ask for the princess's favor. Add insult to injury. I just kicked your favorite uncle's ass. Oh, she loved Sir Kristen. Princess. I like it. The Dornish, we already know they got some spitfire in them. Congratulations, your grace. You have a son. Oh, thank God, I guess. What's wrong with it? Why is it making that sound? Oh, word's getting out. Sorry, hun. I feel like your mom was one of the few people that was in your... Actually, no, your dad seems to be pretty sweet on you, too. But I think, like you said, your fear might come true that you're going to get overshadowed by your baby brother. But I feel like there's going to be a level of resentment there. That happens a lot when moms die in birth. Hope it was worth it. You got your heir. The date baby didn't make it. God! Oh! Feels like it was going to happen that way regardless, though. Shut up. Just shut up. Just shut up. Already, shut up. Set her ablaze. Dracaris. It's time. I don't think he's gonna Dracaris. have the ability to do it. Who are these filthy men? Are they the dragon trainers? They never washed. Please stop pretending to be sad. This is what you wanted. If Damon were to remain the uncontested heir, it could destabilize the realm. I'd leave. The truth is, Damon should be far away from this court. Damon is my brother. My blood. Mm -hmm. If the gods should visit some further tragedy on you, either by design or design? accident. What are you saying? My brother would murder me. Yes. In your sleep. Actually, to your face. What am I saying? 
Under such circumstances, it would not be an aberration for the king to name a successor. Well, who else would have a claim? His sister. The king's firstborn child. Rhaenyra. Ooh! A girl. Yes! No queen has ever sat the Iron Throne. Well, that is only by tradition and precedent. Start new! My wife and son are not dead! Facts. I will not sit here and suffer crows that come to feast on their corpses! I mean... Uh, this is rough because they both have points like he should be allowed to grieve. But at the same time, once word gets out that there's no heir, this is exactly the spark that's necessary for revolution. Heavy as the head. How is his grace? Very low. Which is why I sent for you. I thought you might go to him. Oh, God. Offer him comfort. Ew. In his chambers. Yep. He's selling you off, sis. I wouldn't know what to say. I don't think he needs you to talk. You see the way she's picking at her nails already? Oh, you poor thing. Ugh, this is so gross. Look at him. He's already dismissed you. You might wear one of your mother's dresses. I... Oh, uh. I don't know how y'all died, but I, I, I think y'all deserved it. All disgusting. Can you imagine your best friend becoming your stepmama? I brought a book. And my vagina. It's very kind, thank you. And my fertile wound. All I wanted was for someone to say that they were sorry for what happened to me. I'm very sorry, Your Grace. Look at her, heartfelt, that's the way to go. He's a king, but he is human. Somewhere in there. <laughs> oh, game of porn. King and council have long ruled my position as next in line for the throne. But. Dream and pray is that- Not this man mid-coitus, I can't. He's like, can you speed this speech up? Um, I got like two pumps left. Styling him the heir for a day. Yeah, that's your uncle that you praise. Will address me as your grace or I will have my king's guard cut out your tongue. Oh, please do. The heir for a day. Hmm. Did you say it? You did. You already know he did. You know he's been a spoiled shit his entire life. Let's not act like he's different now. But instead of being by my side or Rhaenyra's, you chose to celebrate your own rise, laughing with your whores and your leg spittles. Yes. Is this any different than he's been the whole time? I have only ever defended you. That's your problem. And everything I've given you, you've thrown back in my face. You've and you didn't learn. And not once have you asked me to be your hand. Why would I do that? Because I'm your brother. Okay, nepotism. Otto Hightower is a more honorable man than you could ever be. He doesn't protect you. I would. From what? Exactly. You're weak, Viserys. He's not wrong about that. If you were strong, you would have cut his head off. You are to return to Runestone and your lady wife at once. And you are to do so without quarrel. By order of your king. Try it, he said. Get out. Soft. That brother of yours would slit your throat to your face. Remember, remember when uh, Tyrion found this cave? Remember when Tyrion found this cave? He was so happy. Without them, we're just like everyone else. True. But we control the dragons. Is an illusion. Do tell. If we don't mind our own histories, it would do the same to us. Targaryen must understand this to be king. Or queen? Or queen. Hey! Please be better than your uncle. Damon was not made to wear the crown. That's true. And shall defend them against all enemies in good faith and without deceit. Oh, she looks either sick or jealous. I mean, if she gets pregnant, what does that do? I guess nothing at this point. He named the heir. Promised to be faithful to King Viserys and is named heir, the Princess oh. Rhaenyra. Sis is mad. Now a queen? She's like, now a queen? I, Orban Baratheon, promise to be faithful. Nope. The Baratheons will not be faithful. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Aegon foresaw the end of the world of men. It is to begin with a terrible winter. Oh. Rickon Stark, Lord of Winterfell. Rickon! Aegon called his dream the song of ice and fire. Woo! Name drop. Chills. Now you must promise to carry it. 
Let's Wear it check. well. That's right. And don't tell your ugly uncle. I, Viserys Targaryen, first of his name. It's so interesting because the Viserys that we saw in, Dry in Game of Thrones was such a terrible person. Didn't live up to his namesake at all. Let's hope you do a good job. It's not an easy job at all. And almost everyone around you sucks, so. And we end with the roar of a dragon. Nice. Wow, that actress did a really good job there at the end with her look of kind of fear. <laughs> that big gulp moment when she realizes just how serious and how real this really is. Okay, guys. Well, that was the first episode of House of the Dragon. And I feel like this is very much an establishing episode. We get to see kind of what the world was like at this time. We're told this is just shy of 200 years before the Game of Thrones era starts. So... Um, I would say from what we picked up from this episode, we have the Targaryens in power and having been in power for a while now, but it's already starting to disintegrate. And we're seeing that there is some infighting. Uh, what did they say at the beginning of the episode? That the one thing that could probably take down the House of the Dragon is the House of the Dragon. And we're starting to already see the seeds of that, right? It started initially from the last king that we saw at the beginning of the episode, not having an heir and having to name one. And he had the option to name his own daughter, which is what he should have done. But in the end, he named his brother because he was too scared of what people would think if he named a female heir. And this is something that like, it's very reflective of real life, right? Like if you look at um the royal family in England, for example, they just passed the law. What is it? Six, seven years ago now saying that um, the firstborn child, uh, if even if it's a girl, can finally sit the throne because right up until Charles, uh, sorry, William's birth, you had to have a firstborn male heir to take the, th the throne. So even if he wasn't the firstborn child, child, which in the case of Elizabeth, that's the case. Like for those who are not aware, Prince Charles is not uh, Princess, um, sorry, Queen Elizabeth's first child. She actually has a daughter as her firstborn, but her daughter can't sit the throne because she's not a man. So like I said, it just, it was in our generation that that law changed. So uh, very realistic here that the Targaryens and that uh, Westeros had this same very misogynistic idea that a woman can't sit the throne. But here, now that Viserys was in the same position now that his forebear was where he was not able to produce a male heir, he had a hard decision to make. But I like that he, I like that despite everything he it's not that he never saw the value or the intelligence of his daughter. Because in the beginning of the episode, it definitely seemed like he almost, they, they made it sound like he completely disregarded his daughter, which I didn't get the feeling of, um, of from what we saw. Like the fact that he made her his cupbearer so she'd be able to hear all these conversations, like very important conversations about state and the realm and, and the, you know, the royal family and things like that. So, I mean, for him to allow her to be part of that, he clearly didn't want her to be some ignorant, flighty girl just sitting around twiddling her nails. But I think he really did want the son because of the expectations that surrounded the idea that he had to produce a son. Because that's the other thing people don't really look at is that, yes, it's misogynistic, but you also have to think of the pressure that that put on Viserys too, that he couldn't just put his daughter on the throne. He thought he had to produce a male heir. And, you know, for his wife, like I said in the episode, super tragic that they've gone through stillbirths and um, miscarriages, you know, trying to get this male heir to happen. And that the fact that they only had, they already had a healthy daughter, but they couldn't really stop there to despite the fact that they clearly were having issues. And then of course we saw how heartbreaking that whole situation turned out. So I feel like if he had, I kind of wish he had felt this way sooner. Cause I mean, it could have saved his, his wife's life. Uh, and his wife definitely would have st um, stood behind him on this decision. But I understand, like I said, there's a lot of pressure in these families as well to produce that male heir, even if it's not working out. And it's nice to see that Viserys was actually, as I said before, he actually is a genuinely kind man. I mean, that genuine kindness is why he even allowed Damon to be such a, let's just change, let's call him what he really is, shall we? Demon? <laughs> he was a demon, like the, he's just a spoiled brat who's clearly gotten away with everything he's ever wanted to do his entire life. And, you know, towards the end in that conversation we saw in the throne room, you could hear a little bit of where maybe that was coming from. Like he said, he's been sent around. His brothers basically kept him everywhere, but by his side. It sounds like Viserys has never looked at him very seriously as an heir. And again, this might've been because Damon's always been a bit spoiled, but it, someone could argue that maybe if Viserys had you know, given him more responsibility and tried to shape him, maybe he would have 
you know, smartened up or straightened up, but we don't know. Like, we don't know the whole story. We probably aren't going to hear it. But either way, Damon made choices here. He chooses to be an arrogant, hateful, violent, impulsive brat. And that whole exercise we saw that he did in King's Landing, it was absolutely over the top. He did not need to do what he did. Like I said, it didn't look like they were asking any questions or finding anything out. They simply just grabbed, it looks like, pretty much every male that looked to be, you know, of a certain age and just decided to maim them. So that's just horrible to say the least, but it shows you he has literally no sense of empathy, no sense of humanity in him to realize that he, that these are people, that, like he and these people are the same. He's one of those people who, like we saw in Game of Thrones, Viserys, uh, as in um, Daenerys's brother, who felt like he was just above all these people. Like they're just these little ants and he was a god that could do whatever he wanted. So I'm glad that Viserys at least recognized that that was not the kind of man that could ever be on the throne. But again, that empathy and that kindness that he had is why he couldn't just completely cut him off, even though he probably should have. But in the end, like I said, because he had that, he was able to see the worth of his daughter. And like I said, I don't think he ever treated her like she wasn't intelligent enough or capable of doing the job of being a queen. He just really didn't think it was something he could do until he was forced with the decision of, I can't let my brother take the throne. Like it's an interesting character, Viserys. I'm hoping that it doesn't turn out to bite him in the ass. I think it will though, because I said in the episode, I think it's a little too late for him to try to apply, apply discipline at this point. His brother unfortunately had a point when he said, you are weak because if Viserys had put his foot down, there's no way Damon would have gotten this far. You know, like I feel like Damon would have been either banished or probably put someplace where he could do a lot less damage before now. But I have no doubt that Damon is definitely going to seek revenge. We see a few other things that were put in motion. We saw, unfortunately, the hand of the king was disgusting, trying to basically, um, you know, for lack of a better term, prostitute out his daughter to get pregnant so that she can basically give birth to the next heir and get him into the royal family. We know this kind of thing happens. We saw it in the Game of Thrones as well, where people kind of try to slide their, their family into the right places to get them into the royal family. Um, I think the example would have been comparable to what happened to Cersei being pushed on Robert Bar Baratheon because her father wanted to make sure that his family was tied to royalty. So yeah, very sad for her. I felt badly because, you know, like I said, back in those days, girls didn't have a lot of say in their lives and what they wanted and what they wanted to do. And, you know, she clearly doesn't want to do this. You can see she's BFFs with Rhaenerys, but, you know, her, da her dad told her to do it. She's got to do it, I suppose. So we'll see what happens. If she actually ends up becoming a consort to the king, I'd be interested to see what that's going to do to their relationship because now that she is, Rhaenerys is now the named queen, that could make things very tense between the two of them. And we might see a friendship, unfortunately, fall apart there. And I, that's my prediction. I think those two are going to be butting heads, especially if she does end up being pregnant and giving birth to a child that she's probably going to want to have his own, his or her own birthright. But I have a feeling that, you know, if there's going to be a boy born, it's going to be born to this chick. But I bet you it's going to be a kid that's born with brown hair. So anyway... <laughs> But we also got touched on the queen that never was. We just heard her story. We didn't get to hear a lot from her. I do think we're going to see more of her, though. I like her character. She reminds me of the, of the Queen of Thorns, like the air that she has, where she's dealt with a lot. She's sucking up a lot of, of injustice, but I don't think she's down and out for the count. I feel like there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes with her. And we see her husband's on the council, but very much ignored. And maybe that's because of who he's married to. I'm not sure. But I do think there's more going on with them. So I want to see more of that family. I'm hoping in the next episode we get to see more of her, what her thoughts are, what her feelings are, and um, how she's handling this news now that she's seeing that, okay, now we're doing Queens. What about me? Like, I should be next if that's the case. Very interesting introduction. Like I said, very much a groundwork laying episode, but we know who some of the major players are now. I feel like we're going to see some more. We definitely saw a few houses. We saw Rick on start and we saw, um, I can't remember the name of uh, Grandpappy Baratheon. So I think we're going to start seeing some, some more political foils happen as the season goes on as well. I really enjoyed this episode. So guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and we will see you in the next video.